please grab a drink and get comfortable because today we are talking about how Artfight can make you a better artist by going over how Artfight has made me a better artist, including some examples of what I mean by that and how that can work for you too. Artfight is an exciting event that happens every summer where artists of all kinds of skill level come together with their own homebrew characters and draw gift art for one another. There is no pressure when it comes to art fight because nothing is required, nothing is assigned, everything is at your discretion. You can choose who to draw and who to draw for without the pressure of expectations attached. And I bring all of that up to say that this event facilitates a great environment for experimentation and learning new things rather rapidly since it takes place all in the course of one month. But let's get into what I actually learned. First things first, I learned new functions in my software that I had never used before. Things that I thought Procreate wasn't even capable of and that I just was doing without even though I'd used these features in other softwares pretty regularly. That's one thing that Artfight can do for you through exposure, exposure to other artists. I learned by watching other Artfight streamers how I could be using my software better. I learned new techniques from other artists through Artfight. And that is something that is really easy to do. It's so easy to pick up new information when you are absolutely inundated with it, just like in Artfight. In addition to learning new functions in my software, I was also learning new techniques, or at the very least, returning to other techniques that I wasn't as comfortable with, that I wasn't using as frequently in my regular art. Things like shading and highlighting and different coloring techniques. I went from cell shading to shading with gradients, DIY gradients that I was using in Airbrush to create manually rather than like say a gradient fill pocket tool, which is also great too. All of these different techniques, all of these different functionalities, all of these different ways of producing your art are often rusty, right? Like you get used to doing the same thing a certain way and you don't usually let yourself, or at least I don't usually allow myself to step outside my comfort zone and what I know that I could do well to try other things. And Art Fight is a great time to alleviate that pressure to perform well and just allow yourself to produce more and produce different content, which is also a lot easier when you're drawing unfamiliar characters. And speaking of unfamiliar characters, I very rarely do fandom art, which is something that I want to do more of. It's something I wish I did more often, but I rarely do because I either don't feel strongly enough about a fandom or, more accurately, my crippling perfectionism gets in the way of me drawing fan art for something that I have seen other artists who have way more technical skill or experience do a way better job at than I think I would personally. So it can be very difficult to enter into that space or get over the self-inflicted judgment when it comes to that kind of anxiety and that fear of underperforming or holding yourself to an unrealistic standard. So again, this is not ideal. This is not a tip. This is something that you want to get past and get over and be comfortable doing drawing fan art. And I feel like Artbite has really allowed me this year, especially, to do that. Have you ever wanted to learn animation but couldn't quite make the time for it? Me too. I've been wanting to start animating for so long and I have so many work in progress projects that involve animation that I just haven't been able to put aside enough time for. The scale has just been too big. But this year on Artbite, and with the help of a tutorial on how to animate in Procreate, I was able to finally do something about that. And I put together two animation attacks this year with simple, short GIF animations that I hadn't really given myself permission to do because I didn't have 
a purpose for it. And with Artvite, I did because I was able to create short gifs of other people's characters to give them as gift art. That was a purpose in and of itself. It was delivering work, animated work, that didn't have to serve a much grander purpose. And for folks who are very goal-oriented like me, that's a big deal. Everything I do has to be for a reason, has to serve a purpose, and I was glad to have one to finally get me up and moving with animation. And the same could be said about drawing cute girls for the sake of cute girls. I can't really justify that in my day to day, but with Art Fight, again, I could. The next area of improvement is a big one, you guys, because this is one that most of us struggle with, at least in my experience, and that's backgrounds. Very rarely do I have the confidence to draw a background. My most comfortable area is really character art, particularly humanoids, and so Artbite is the opportunity of a lifetime to step outside of your comfort zone when it comes to character drawing because there are so many various types of characters to draw that might be unusual for you and it's a great time to practice those skills when you're drawing a subject that is unusual for you. Along with that though is the art of backgrounds and there is no requirement of course to draw a background, there's no requirement to draw anything at all, but the opportunity to experiment with background art, to make something, and it's okay if it's not perfect. It's okay if it's, you know, a learn a lesson learned rather than an overwhelming success. And I think that this is a great example of that. In this drawing, I first of all was absolutely enamored with this wizard character. He is just so cool, lovely design, perfect design really but I wanted to show him doing something magical with water. And so I tried a background and I'm not 100% satisfied with it, but I am happy with it. I'm very excited by this drawing because I learned a new effect with water. And I think that the next time I try to draw something like this, I will do a better job only because I have this foundation to build on. And that's something that you can gain through art by too. I probably didn't do the best job explaining that, but hopefully the heart of the point came across as none of this is scripted. Another huge area of growth when it comes to art fight and just pumping out tons and tons of character drawings during the event is the practice of posing. You're drawing characters, you're going to gain some experience through the, that artwork when it comes to poses, even if you're just doing busts or headshot, you're still practicing posing. And I really wanted to push myself to try some more dynamic poses this year, poses that are very difficult for me and really require that I experiment a little with stuff that I haven't tried before. And an example of that is this drawing I have up on screen now. Not only is it a very action-oriented pose, but it's also a really unusual angle and so I really tried something here. I don't know how successful I was but I'm still very glad I tried and I do feel I learned a lot. Lastly I wanted to mention experimenting with lighting because during Art Fight I have a tendency to try things that I wouldn't normally try because I feel enabled to learn while I'm playing Art Fight and some examples of the different lighting techniques that I tried and learned from this year are now up on screen. I had a lot of fun and I was pleasantly surprised with how these turned out and I'm really glad that I got to draw your guys' characters this year in Art Fight and I can't wait to do it again next year. If you're also looking forward to the next Art Fight, please remember to like and subscribe to this video and this channel because honestly, it's Art Fight all year around here. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.